Welcome. ProRaw is finally here with iOS 14.3, and everyone is excited for good reason. It's a new RAW format with computational magic, and is extremely easy to use. But there are some tips you need to know if you want to use ProRaw like a pro. In this video, I'll share four things I've learned from using ProRaw for over a month with the iOS 14.3 betas. First, resist the temptation to shoot everything in ProRaw, as the files are significantly larger and they can fill up your phone fast. On average, the sizes are 10 times bigger than the heaps and JPEGs. And it's also worth noting that the ProRaw files untouched look just like the standard JPEGs. Take a look at these two images. Which one is ProRaw? Can you tell? It's the one on the right. And that image is also 37 megabytes. You can imagine how fast that can add up. So my advice is to use ProRaw for photos that you plan to spend time editing. Maybe set your camera app to default to ProRaw turned off. Second, ProRaw is best in situations with tricky exposure or white balance. For example, if you're using night mode, ProRaw can really help you recover tons of detail in the dark areas. And I've covered this in depth in a previous video that I'll link here. Similarly, Smart HDR can sometimes struggle with making images too warm or too cool, essentially getting confused with the white balance. We can even see this shift happen real time in video. Here we can see that it's cool near the clouds, and as we get near the ground, it becomes warmer. ProRaw makes it easier to fix these types of problems. Third, turn on other pro camera features like the new exposure compensation control. This lets you set the perfect brightness for a given situation without having to set the brightness for every single shot. I often find myself using this in lower light scenes where the images are too bright. And I'll set this to maybe negative 0.3 to negative 0.7 just to get an equal exposure. You can even set the app to save your last used settings for this. Now with ProRaw, this doesn't matter as much since you can obviously tweak the exposure when you edit the image. Fourth, the Photos app works fine for editing ProRaw images, but if you want to take it to the next level, consider using an app like Lightroom. Raw editing is quite limited in the Photos app right now. It's a lot of the same basic controls that we have with the heaps and JPEGs. Using software like Lightroom will give you many more options. You'll be amazed at how much data these raw files have. A bonus tip. Why not show the world you shoot raw on your phone by buying one of my new shirts? I created a new design to showcase how we are not average smartphone photographers here. We push our images to be the very best they can be by shooting in RAW formats like ProRAW. Let me know what you think about the design in the comments below, and thank you very much for supporting this channel. So there we go. This has been an exciting year for smartphone photography. ProRAW is going to bring many new people into the awesome world of RAW, because half of the magic in photography happens in the edit. I'm working on the ultimate RAW battle where we're going to put up ProRAW against one of the best RAW smartphones out there, the Xperia 1 Mark II. That video is coming very soon. I was waiting for iOS 14.3 to get out of beta to make it a fair comparison. More ProRAW content is coming, so subscribe if you're new and like this video if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.